Okay. Action. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Missouri Star Live. I am Misty Doan. I'm here with my fabulous sister-in-law, Natalie. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Um, if you guys didn't know, Natalie did a class with us that mm -hmm. uh, it's called Create Better Bindings. Yes, it is. Yes. And it's <laughs> been super fun and, and it's been really well received, but we had a few questions and we wanted she to teach you guys a little about it. She is a pro. She is a pro. I guess so. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. So we wanted well, we to hop on. we have some highs from Italy. Ooh, wow. awesome. Let's Wait, see where people are tuning in from. We have Margo from Canada. Chris, she saw our booth Copper at Road to California. Hi. Thanks for visiting them. They're the best. That's my parents that, that do that. Oh, How am I, I feel like I'm so much louder oh, than Oh, there's another Misty. Misty from Tennessee. Thanks for tuning in, Misty. <laughs> Let's see. Lots of Minnesotas today. Wichita. Yeah. Germany. I bet, I bet Czech Republic. Getting ready for the cold. Oh, tomorrow. I know. It's supposed We've, to be terrible. In terrible Minnesota. in Minnesota. We thought we had it bad here, but not. No. Not compared to them. No, our negative what twelve or something. It's nothing compared nothing to compared, fifty-seven yeah. or sixty-five. Woo, oh I my know. goodness, those it's, temps are so scary. That is pretty frigid. So, yeah, just you just don't go outside then. Bramer. <laughs> no. Nope. Bramer, that's not too far. And no. England and South Af Africa. So. Wow. Oh, nice. Exotic. That's awesome. <laughs> All exotic countries. Thank you guys for tuning in with us. We appreciate it. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, binding by machine, right? Yes. Yeah, we've had a lot of questions about how uh, machine binding looks front to back and how you, just little things, people still wanting to see a, how to finish the ends again, things like that. So Perfect. some questions. And... All right, so I'll let you get started then. Tell me okay. what you've got here. Okay. I've just got to say Kaylee's name. She said, say my name, so... <laughs> Hi, Kaylee. Hi, Kaylee. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in. All right. And if anybody um, asks a question while we're doing this, then we'll address that as well, right? Oh, yeah. yeah for sure. Okay. I'm on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is finish this corner, and I'm going to go around and finish the end. Okay. So we want to make sure we show the corner because we did have a few questions about how to get a oh, good um, corner. And also, just to give you guys a little bit of insight, this is a two and a half inch strip. That yes. you folded wrong sides together. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Show, what right? are we, do you put want to, it on the top cam? You want to see this that? one right here. So it's it's two and a half inches wide, and we folded it in half. Actually, one of the questions that I got was about um, a gal said that she had been taught to fold it in half and then fold those two ends into the middle, and that's totally like an okay way to do it. I just don't do it that way because um, that leaves you with only one layer of fabric on the edge. And I prefer to have this this double layer of protection. Also, this is just so much easier. Yeah. So it's not a wrong way to do that. You totally can continue doing your bindings that way. It's fine. It's just not how I do it. Yeah. Perfect. So, so yeah. So we just folded it in half, and then you've stitched it all the way around, and you're going to finish that up almost. Yep. So we can show one corner. Yes. Michael, have we got a good angle so you can show this corner? Fabulous. Somebody else asked me asked me a question about how I hold my hand on the back here. That is not to pull, it's just to guide. So I'm just trying to keep my quilt in place and, and hold on to it, but I'm not pulling. All right, so once I get to about a quarter of an inch away from the corner, I'm gonna turn it. Oh, there it is. I'm not used to this machine. And stitch off the end at a little 45 degree angle. Okay, towards the point of the corner. Right, then I pull it out. And do I need to move this so you can see it better? Where's the best place? Um, I'm going to get set X, can you pull all the way to the middle? Yeah. You don't, have, you don't have to cut the thread like I just did. I'm just doing that to move it out here so you can see. So we just flip it straight up and then pull it straight back down. And it just makes that beautiful little mitered corner. And then all I'm gonna do is continue sewing down the edge starting up here at the corner. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that's awesome. Okay. And you can start right at the top, or you can come in a little bit. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> so Natalie, if you were, it's hard to tell because these are kind of solid panels that you've got here on this little sample. Uh -huh. But are you sewing this to the back or the front of the quilt? Um, this one. I am sewing front to back, technically, because I think the more decorative fabric would be the front. Okay. But we're also going to show how to do the decorative zigzag stitch. So it, it 
When you do the decorative zigzag, you generally put it on the back and flip it to the front because the front is going to look better. Okay. And that's just like a kind of one of those things you do when you just want to get it done real quick. It's okay. not going to look perfect. And I'll show you the back so you can just relax and take the pressure off. It's not going to be totally straight. Perfect. So right. there's a question about like how wide you're sewing and how I think the seam width too. Like the seam length is length. just standard two and a half. Or 2.5, I mean. And it's just a quarter inch that you're using yeah, to attach. Yeah, and a quarter inch out from the edge of the quilt. Super easy. All right, so I'm close enough. I have these uh, tails here, and I'm going to go ahead and cut to, to secure these two ends together. Perfect. See how they overlap? Yeah. So all I need to do is figure out uh, that space, which is just the width of your binding strip. So I'm going to cut this little piece off right here. And so this is two and a half inches wide, which is how far you need to measure. So I'm gonna pull this one up from the bottom. And it doesn't really matter whether you use like the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter which strip you cut, you just wanna make sure that they both overlap by two and a half inches. So you can see that this one down here, I don't know if you can see that very well. You've lined it right yep, up on I'm the I'm lining edge. them right up. I'm putting this lined up with that strip. They're gonna overlap and I'm gonna cut this top strip just like that. So you have exactly that two yep. and a half inch a overlap. Tiny bit crooked there, but that's okay. Um, and then you take this piece and flip it out and this piece and flip it that, that way. And then these go together and you sew top left to bottom right to get that 45 degree angle, ah. makes that mitered seam. And then, you know, you've reduced bulk and you've got your, your that's binding awesome. ready to go. So. All right. So let's, sew can that. we show that one more time before you sew it? Sure. Just because I feel like that's really good, really good hint right here. So she, right. you cut it so that they so overlap the two overlap. and a half. This, the width of your strip can be used as a measurement. You don't really have to do anything else. And it works even if you have different width binding. A lot of people like a wider binding or right. a narrower binding. Some people do two and a quarter, some do three. This still works. All you have to do is have the same overlap as you have width. Okay, that's So you perfect. take your, fab, your piece and lay it down there and then just cut it to fit. That's and awesome. So there's no measuring, no rulers, no nothing crazy required. So then you pull this, this one. This piece, super easy. Right you sides fold it, up. Yep. And then this piece, you just fold up this way. So you're putting right sides together and then lying these on top of each other and sewing top left, bottom right. Perfect. Every time. Somebody said no walking foot. You can use a walking foot if you're more comfortable with that, but I have never had an issue. Yeah, I haven't either. It's, it's I always super do easy without. for me. I don't. Well, and we really my quilts aren't that bulky. Yeah, and and we believe here at Misery Star that everybody should be able to make a quilt, and so some people don't have a walking foot, and they should right. feel confident sitting down at their machine and sewing binding on. Right. You, so if you have a walking foot, it's great, yeah. and it probably would make your life so much easier. I actually don't know the difference. I know. So. <laughs> I've, I've never had a problem not using one either. So we just keep doing what we do. <laughs> yes. Yep. So that, can we fold that? There's like a fold in the way right there. Yeah. There we go. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. Yeah. So all I'm doing right now is just sewing that um, diagonal seam and I'm just going to eyeball it. Go top left, bottom right at, you know, making that little 45 degree. And they could draw a seam. line or something can, if they were. You can if you need to, but yeah. it's so short yeah. that really you just, you're just looking at this little bit here and you just go straight, straight across. across. And then we'll just check it. I always like to check it. I pull it apart before I cut because if I need to restitch, yeah. take it in a little that bit, fits but perfect, this fits though. perfect. So luckily, you know, yeah. since I'm on camera and everything. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. If yeah. it weren't going to so work, just... this would be the time that oh, it would for sure. work. <laughs> for sure. All right. So we're just going to cut it. I leave about a quarter of an inch, just like, you know, know pretty much everywhere seam. else. Yeah. And then we just stitch this straight down and it's nice and flat and you're ready to flip it and sew but it down. Easy as pie. how you keep it straight. What do you mean? How do I keep it straight? I think like, it's just uh, the quarter inch seam, just like. How to do a straight seam? No, they want to know how they well, get the binding straight. Oh. I think you just take your time. It's yeah. not, it's, it's fairly simple for me. Yeah, just don't pull too much. Cause especially if you're yeah, working you with bias binding, you don't ever want to pull that cause you'll get kind of some, too much some stretch. bowing and stretch. But, yeah. but this and is just straight grain. Sure your quilt is yeah, make trimmed. sure you're, you're 
quilt is nice and square, but, but just take your time and you shouldn't have any issue keeping it straight. Right. So. You can pin, you can use wonder clips. Yeah. You know, all those things that help out, but generally I just lay the binding on top of the quilt and go and keep those two lined up together and just go right along the edge and I don't have a problem with things not being straight. Yep. Jamie wants to see how you fold it over on a mitered corner. Oh, we just did like that. Like on the edge? On the outside? Yeah, oh. on the other side. So, yeah, yeah we're we're definitely going to get to that. Yeah, I, mean, I, can, okay. I can show you that real quick where you just fold one side down and then one side over. Slide it back towards you just a hair. So that's just a fold right there. there. And you can, you would do that either as you're hand stitching or while you're machine stitching. Um, but we'll get to that in just a second. Yeah, let's finish. So I'm going to finish, finish sewing this on and then we'll show you a... a Sewn corner. Yeah. We're going to do the zigzag, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Okay. So somebody asked about the straight grain binding and bias binding. Okay. What's the question? What's the difference? Uh, bias is is the, the way that, that the fabric is woven. So you have... You have like a warp and a weft, and yeah. one goes one way and one goes the other. Right. And when you're going with it, you're going straight along the grain. When you're going at the 45 at an degree angle, angle in between that's those. the bias. Yeah. And what that means is like the, the fibers, when they're cut straight, they don't stretch. When they're cut on the bias, they have more stretch. Yeah, so you that, get a little give. Yeah, so that is why you would use a bias cut for a curve, because it's going to give you enough give to go around that curve without... Um, causing a lot of wrinkles and puckers. Mm -hmm. and yeah, you can get a lot of a lot of stretch with bias, like yeah. more than you would <laughs> even really think possible. It's right. kind of crazy. Right. But, it's, um, it's great for curves and yeah. waves, and but pretty much that's the only reason I would use it because right. I like having my binding not stretch right. so that it can stay straight and fold straight, and exactly. I don't have to worry about having that extra give in a, in a regular rectangular or square quilt. Exactly, so. I agree. So bias binding is for the curves? It's for curves. Yes. Bias binding is generally for curves. Straight binding. Double wedding ring. The what? They, they just, I think just to mention, like, to make it, you would just, instead of cutting the fabric in straight lines, you just cut it 45 You degrees. cut it at yes. 45 angles. Yes. It's easy angles. to make. Mm -hmm. Right. It's super easy to make. And we do go over that in detail in the video. In the, in the class. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> We're just giving you a little sneak peek, but there's yep. all kinds of info on the class. This is one of those only places on the quilt where I'm just going to back stitch a little bit to secure that end. Perfect. All righty. So, oh, we did have a question. Speaking of the, the bias binding, we had somebody ask about how to cut scallops. And mm -hmm. I think, I'm pretty sure mom did a great video on that. Mm -hmm. We may come out with some more details about trimming and we might include scallops in that. But for now, I'm fairly certain that mom has a really good... Tutorial. Scallop tutorial, yeah. I we use the Scallop Binds yeah. and Waves tool. And that booklet has really great detailed instructions. It's super easy. Yes, it so is. So don't be intimidated by cutting a scalloped quilt. Yep. It's, it's great. It's yeah. easy. And All right. it makes your quilt look so cute. Oh, so it's much like, ooh-ah with yeah, that, like, so you, like, cute. add this little wavy, bo um, wavy border on the outside. It's so cute. I just love it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, I did also have someone else ask, when you're getting ready to stitch the outside of your binding where do you start and it doesn't really matter because it's a com it's a complete Loop. almost like a circle but it's square yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how to explain it but it goes it's you have continuous. to go all the way around so it doesn't really matter but for me personally i like to pick an area that's maybe like 10 or 12 inches from one of the corners because then i know that once i've counted my four corners i'm literally like almost done and i need i need like a finish line you know so I prefer that. It's totally personal. You can start anywhere you want on your quilt. It doesn't matter. I would probably, I mean, you can, you can start on a corner if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. But I prefer, um, like I would say probably two thirds down from the top maybe. Yeah. So that's, that's what I do. It's pretty easy. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Get those out of your way. There we go. That works. <laughs> so shall we show yeah. the zigzag stitch? Let's do it. All right. So Teresa has a question of like the size. Two and a half is like the standard. That's but can't just, you go up or down? You can. You wouldn't want it to be too lengthy because then you have too much space in between your stitches and it won't be really tight. You want 
You want your binding to stay on. Yeah. No, no, no. She's talking about the actual binding itself. Oh. The width of the, the binding? The width of the binding. Oh, okay. So um, two and a half is an easy, it's like super easy to do. A lot of people like their binding to look really full. And so then you would want something smaller, like a two and a quarter. Um, Especially I, for a smaller project, like yeah. if you have a table runner or a wall hanging, a lot of people will go down to a two and a quarter. Or maybe something that you're putting in a show that's going to be judged. Yeah. You would want something a little bit fancier. Yeah. Um, I did see a gal just a couple weeks ago, she put a really wide binding on her quilt and pulled it around to the front and it looked like, a, like an extra border. Hmm. And that was really pretty. And so it makes the... Uh, the binding kind of look like a uh, knife edge binding, which is oh, really cool. Interesting, yeah. And so like a two and a half is standard, but there's all kinds standards. of options. You can do whatever you want. It's your quilt. Yeah, absolutely. It's totally up to you. So <laughs> go I love for that. it. Have fun. All right. So I just pulled that across. I'm going to set the machine to a zigzag stitch. All right. And I'll be sure and pull it out when we're at the corner so you can see that part. So, Natalie, tell us why choosing a, a zigzag stitch is a good choice for if you're going to machine bind. Why would you go with it? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, it's it's one of those questions of preference, right? Okay. Can, there, machines come with so many stitches, and you can pick anything that you want. Um, the reason a zigzag is is good is just because it's easy. Yeah, it zigs back and forth. You can't really tell if it's a super straight line. And normally when you're doing machine binding, when you flip it over, that line can curve and go kind of wild because you can't see it while you're sewing it down. Right, from the other side. Right. So yeah. this is not one of those methods that you would use if you were taking your quilt to a show to be judged. It's a method that you would use if you were giving, you know, to, to somebody that takes it on picnics all the time or or a, a kid, toddler that's going to drug that's gonna drag it through the dirt <laughs> yes it's yeah. going to make your binding go on it's really secure it's really fast okay it's not the most beautiful okay but you know i'm totally fine with it i love quilts with zigzag binding because it, it's great yeah i've seen a lot of people use um the fancy stitches because they they um they look pretty. Right. Well, and you have them on your machine, so why not, right? right? <laughs> you can do a different one on every quilt you Yeah, line that's exactly and right. And just enjoy them. They take a little longer. The zigzag yeah. is still pretty fast. Yeah, that's true. So it's just kind of like a, a quick, easy, fast thing to do. And it's a little more forgiving, it sounds like. It's super forgiving. Okay, awesome. So you don't, you don't notice as much that, um, that that seam isn't super straight. Perfect. All right. Because it's not meant to go in a straight line, I guess. Take it away. All right. I got it on six. I'm not 100% sure on this machine. I'm going to go ahead and lengthen the stitch a little bit, and I'm going to widen it a little bit. But I don't know how this machine sews. Do you want to test it out? Yeah. yeah, here's a little, yeah. little scrap. That would be great. There That's go. a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, so practice. Before you, <laughs> before you get to your first <laughs> Okay, so I have a machine that shows me the stitch width that, yeah. when I'm you know, measuring it out and yeah. typing it in. This one doesn't have that kind of screen. so, And I didn't think of it ahead of time. That's all right. <laughs> All right. So that actually that looks great. Some decorative stitches. Uh huh. And it added, it actually made waves on the side of the quilt. Which could happen because. Just a lot of stitch density. Stitching, yeah, stitching and stitch density uh, will stretch or compact your fabric. That's why when you when you send your quilt to the machine quilter, for example, sometimes it'll be an inch smaller right. or more based on the density of the stitching because it pulls it all together yes that makes sense yes so that will happen um i mean next time just use a a little looser stitch maybe mm -hmm. widen it a bigger one. Oh yeah i guess well, lengthen it not widen it lengthen and widen yeah it. yeah but practice yeah it's... the there's no batting inside of the binding yes there is well, there yeah, will because be. because the batting yeah. goes all the way out to the edge of the quilt. Yeah, so then and once you loop it around. Somebody's asking if they could piece the batting in there, but it's not actually inside. It's fabric sewed to the edge of the quilt, right? Right. There's right. no batting in this in, the, in this fold. Right. But there is batting in the quilt because it goes all the way out to the edge. Right. You're sandwiching that quilt edge batting in between your fabric. Right. Right. Now, if I think some people maybe want their binding to be super full and that's where you would you could add binding if you wanted to or batting, add batting. I mean, to your binding it seems like a lot of work i've never had no. a reason to do that <laughs> no. 
No, me neither. So I just maybe I'm, if you I make quilts to like give a... to kids. I just have all these kids, and they just yeah, they need something to snuggle up and watch TV and be with, loved and, that's and be about able it. to use. Yep. All right. So I'm just picking somewhere right about the middle, folding it over, making sure I cover the seam. And that's really my only guide. I don't. Um, if you if you wanted this to be a little bit easier, you could press it. You can press this flat mm -hmm. so that you don't have to pull. I don't. I don't usually have to pull too hard, anyways. A two and a half inch binding gives me plenty of space. So I'm just wrapping it around and covering up the seam. And hopefully, what that does is put your stitch line right about the edge of the seam on the other side. Okay. But I promise you, it's not going to be 100% accurate, and it won't be 100% straight. <laughs> but I think that's what we want to show people is that that's really okay. Right. Like yeah. Like if you're using your a binding machine is binding, on, nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> if you're using a machine binding, it's a quilt that should be loved, and it, it gives it some extra durability. So it's really yeah, okay. It's about efficiency. Yep. <laughs> All right, so you do kind of want to make sure that that stitch goes over the edge and hits the quilt a little bit. So I'm just gonna test it out here. And you wanna, you also wanna make sure that you stay kind of at the same speed because like your standard um, sewing machine doesn't have a regulated stitch. So if you sew faster or slower, it's gonna be squishy or spread apart. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I didn't realize well, that's that. That's another I guess. thing you kind of have to watch. You just kind of want to maintain the same speed as you go along. That makes sense. And and it's really best to let the machine go at its pace and not okay. push it through or pull it through. Awesome. So when you're wrapping it around, you what? Are you just trying to pull it around and get it to about the same distance? Yep. All it does is all I'm doing is covering that seam. Yeah. You can see the seam here where she attached it to the front. Mm -hmm. And all she's doing is pulling it around to make sure that she covers that, that seam line. Can you guys see that? Yep. So we're just covering the seam. I'm letting the machine kind of go at its own pace. I'm guiding it, not pulling or pushing. The only part that you really want to hold on to is the binding to make sure it stays folded and lined up where it goes. But even that, you don't, you don't really want to pull too hard. All right, I'm almost to the corner. I'm gonna get there and then we'll show you that part. So awesome. it'll just be, I'm just gonna go for a minute. So you're wanting to know what you, what stitch length, What's stitch that? length you landed on with the oh, machine. So I chose the, um, the decorative zigzag and it, it just uh, stitches in the zigzag. So it's like dashed. And I went with a two and a half inch width and a six, or it's 2.5. I don't know if it's, it's not inches. No. It's <laughs> millimeters or something. Yeah. <laughs> 2.5 and 6.0 on the width. Okay. So that's, that's how this Everstone landed. It's totally fine. Nice and wide. Yeah, it looks great. All right. So right, right down here, I'm about an inch away from the, the corner and I've got my, my one side folded down already. So all I'm going to do is flip this other side up and it makes a pretty easy, um, pretty nice mitered corner. So because I'm stitching on the top, I'm gonna sew and try to catch the top of that when I get to the corner. Can you see that pretty well? Yeah? Okay, okay great. Awesome. Pretty good, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go nice and slow because I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna rush it, you know? You can get a, let it get away from yourself. Why won't this go? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I'm in the corner. I'm gonna go needle down and then just rotate it and keep on holding on to that edge and folding it, covering up the seam as I go. Let me see. Yeah, it's not it's not perfect, but it works. It looks good. All right, so I guess the other thing people wanted to see was how does this look on the back? On the back side, yeah. On the yeah. front, yeah, they wanted to see the front. Too. Well, this, so this part that I'm stitching would be my front. It would be the front of my quilt because that way you can control how it looks. Yeah. Um, the back part is the part you can't control. You can't see it. So uh, that's the part that I actually think it looks fine. Yeah, I do too. Can we, Here. we got to get it on a different We will. We'll, we'll yeah, I'm going to let you guys look a lot closer on this but you can see how it's not perfectly straight you know up here it's wait, it's wait. more on 
pull it down it, here because yeah. it's better this yeah, way probably or, right in here towards this square. okay so right here it's like off the quilt it's right on the binding and then over here can you see how it it comes off a little bit and gets a little crooked it's really not that bad mm -mm. and uh and if you use a, a thread that blends in with the backing of your quilt then you're never going to see you'll it. never notice it's so true. It is, it is a little bit messier, but it's also much faster and yes. much more efficient. Yeah. Um, if you had a quilt that you wanted to, to be an heirloom, I would totally hand find that thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean so it's like you have... said, if you have one that's going to be like loved and drug around and used yes. a lot, then the yeah, machine binding is, is a great sturdy. option. They don't fall apart easy. Yeah. I mean, it's great. I'm going to show it just to this camera here. Okay. Okay. So... What part are you wanting to you see? I want to see the yeah. stitches. The stitches kind of, right here where they come off? I kind of tip it up a little bit. Whoop. Does that work? Oh, no, too much. Nope. Too high? <laughs> right here? Yeah, but then I just want the... Yeah, just tip that down. Can you see it now? Yeah. So it just, it just kind of waves a little bit, and that's just because you can't see the backing while you're stitching. And it, yeah. it really is fine. It's okay to have this be just a little bit messy. Oh, agreed. So do we have any more questions or anything that have come through? Is there anything in here that... Where can they learn more about binding? Oh, yes. So if you want to learn even more, because <laughs> Natalie has an entire amazing class that she put together. It's like an hour so long. Much detail. It's so <laughs> much detail. Really amazing close-ups um, and really great information. There's a link in the post or in the description of this video. So make sure you check it out. It's called Create Better Bindings. Super awesome. And she has all kinds <laughs> of amazing hints. I've made a lot of quilts and I learned so much when we were filming it. So definitely check it out. It's really cool. Finding your quilt is just not as scary as it seems. Yeah, it, it definitely so shouldn't be. And I just want to be, to clarify on that. So like if you're, if you're machine binding or hand binding, that's where the difference, can you tell us about that? As far as putting it on the front of the back? Yes. Yeah. So if you're hand binding, it's prettier to sew your binding straight to the front of the quilt and flip it to the back and then just do a, a little stitch. Um, oh shoot, I can't remember what it's called. It's like la ladder, ladder stitch, stitch that's what I call it, yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's, it's super simple. You just need to connect the binding to the quilt with a little tiny stitch. Uh, when you're putting machine bound binding on, yes. <laughs> I don't know, I just lost it right there. Um, you stitch it to the back and flip it to the front because the front is where your decorative stitch will be, where you can see and make it straight. It's, uh, it's just, preference yeah and, and honestly it doesn't really matter yeah you it's, can do it either it's your way. quilt you can do whatever slip you want stitch, is that what it is uh it can be kind of like a slip stitch kind of like a whip stitch but you're underneath the the fabric so that none of those stitches show yeah so hidden you want it to be hidden awesome so the so where the needle comes out you go right down underneath um in the binding so the needle will come out right in this fold and then you go right down underneath it and, and then your sideways seam is inside the quilt sandwich. And then it comes back up, you go straight back down, and it goes sideways. It's like a, like a dip, like a little... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's pretty simple once you get the It really it. is. It's very easy. Yeah. So I think we covered most of the questions I've got here. So if we have any, we have more, any more that are coming through... There's a comment from Cream Puff. She just said, there's no quilt police here. That's exactly That's true. right. Do it, do it works. We don't believe in yep. the quilt police. Yep. Do what makes you happy. That's just right. Just get those quilts finished. That's awesome. They can be loved and used. That's cool. Well, I think this was great. Thank you so much for coming on here, Natalie, yeah. and sharing this. Um, I hope it uh, opened your guys' eyes. If you haven't tried uh, machine binding or you're afraid to try machine binding, don't please be don't be. There's nothing to fear, and uh, it's a perfectly reasonable option to yes. uh to bind your quilts so thank you so much for being here we really appreciate no it and make sure you guys check out her awesome class because it's really really good um also i wanted to mention we will be in phoenix next week on the 7th and 8th and we, <laughs> we do still have some tickets available uh, for jenny on the road so if you would like to join us for jenny's amazing trunk show it'll be warmer there it will sure. be so much warmer <laughs> there and we're thrilled <laughs> Um, so we will be there and we would love to have you there. Um, there's information about that in the post as well. So you can find everything you need, um, just right below this video or beside this video, depending on where you're watching, <laughs> but thank you so much well, for being here. Now I want to see a close up of the corner. Oh, okay. So just show them real one more, quick. Uh, folding it or the, the one that's one? finished or the one that needs to be folded. We can do both. Okay. So this Who is the it? one that's finished. This is how it ended up. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. the most beautiful corner that I've ever done. 
but it's effective and it's finished and down. And I'll show you. So does everybody see this pretty well? And then you want me to show like this one? Okay. So I'm saying is this like tip it up just a little like bit. That. Like that? Yeah. Okay. You got a good look at that. <laughs> this is the one that I just sewed on the machine a second ago. Yep. Got and it. that is the back. Well, and then this is the front. Which side do you want? Back or front? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now the other Great. side. This other side? All right. This is the back. Wait one sec. Hold up. I don't know where to put it. <laughs> it's, it's like super zoomed, so your his right, area you is really small. Yeah. Okay, All right. Perfect. Do you want to see the fold again? Sure, let's see the fold. Yeah. All right. Right, Joanne. So, as you're as you're sewing, usually you'll be coming down this side because I'm right-handed, and it'll come towards me this way. You'll stitch all the way to the to the corner, just about, and then you'll fold that down. And then what I do is I continue my stitching to grab that little fold. Keep the needle down and rotate it and then just keep stitching this way. So it just makes its own little mitered corner pretty easily. Yeah, that's see awesome. That? Can you see it very pretty well? Yeah? Uh, don't <laughs> move it. You're really gonna don't move. It. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe my hands are shaking a little yeah. bit. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not awesome. nervous. No, not at all. Not at all. It's don't fine. be nervous. Well, you guys are awesome, yeah. This was this is great. So thank you so much Bye. for being here and thank you all for being here and we yeah. will see you uh, next week, next Tuesday at 11 o'clock. <laughs> well, have see an awesome guys. day. Bye. See ya. <laughs>